someone asks me a question because they hey, are talking to someone and that individual believes that they are or have been through their life a bigger sinner than them. <clears throat> now the question that I heard when she asked that was they thought or that what I heard was they thought that they were better at sinning throughout their entire life because that's really what it comes down to. Um, in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18, the Bible said, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before fall. Now, something that's really important about that verse to take note of, and we stress punctuation and wording in the Bible all the time. If you notice, pride goeth before destruction, then there's a comma followed by the word and. Now, if you go to church here, you already know this. If you don't, and you're watching or listening, um, proper punctuation, a comma, followed by the word and, means in addition to. If there is no comma, just the word and, it means a continuation of. So this is not pride and haughtiness. Haughtiness is not a continuation of pride in this verse. Haughtiness is in addition to pride. That means they are two separate things. And that's because haughtiness is referencing arrogance. And typically when you hear pride, that's what you think it's talking about. You're being arrogant. Uh, that's not what pride is. Pride is putting yourself above someone else in any way whatsoever. If a person is indulging in a bunch of self-pity, saying, oh, poor me, um, that's because they are putting their, their sorrow, their grief, their agony ahead of other people. They are being prideful. For someone to say, uh, oh, I am so much better at this than you, that's not pride, that's haughtiness. For someone to say that, oh, my sin in my past and in my life is so much more and grievous than anything you've done, that's actually pride. They're being prideful. Because the truth of the matter is, uh, pride, as it says in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 23, a man's pride shall bring him low. Pride literally brings you down. It doesn't lift you up in arrogance. And cockiness, that's haughtiness. Pride almost always sets you down lower than everything else in your life because it's all about you. So all the weight is on you. All the pressure is on you. The same thing happens when you start thinking about all the sin you've committed. Oh, how could God forgive me? All my sin is so bad compared to you. It's because your pride is setting you there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, the Bible is very clear. There's nothing special about you or your sin. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. You've not faced a moment of temptation in your life and then fallen into that sin that every other person on earth has not faced. Nothing special about your sin or your stumbles or your transgressions. The same Jesus that was crucified on that cross, whose blood was, sh blood was shed, required to be shed in order to save you. You don't have a sin that didn't require that, that someone else has a sin that didn't require Every sin... No matter how great in your mind or how small in your mind, requires the blood of Jesus Christ. And you've not faced a struggle or a temptation that's not common among men. That's what the Bible says. And the fact of the matter is, if you still have sin that God is aware of, um, you have a bigger problem than comparing your sinful life to someone else's sinful life. Because if God is aware of that sin, that's the only thing that matters. Does God see my sin or does He not? And if God sees that sin, your bigger problem is you need to get saved. Romans 10, 9, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's where you're at. That's where you need to be. Because if you've got any sin that is relevant at all, then you have a bigger problem. Because you need Jesus. 
Because that's all sin. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2. Isaiah 59 verse 2, the Bible says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you, that He will not hear. If you've got any kind of sin that you can spend any time thinking about or talking about that has not been washed away from you, that's your problem right there. You're set in a position to where you are separated from God. And that's what you need to get fixed. You don't need to worry about it. How big was your sin? How good at sinning were you versus somebody else? Oh, you are so much better at sinning than that person. Because that's all that you're saying. You are setting yourself above someone else's pride. And if that's where you're at, if you do have that sin, you better call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Because you need God to wipe that away. Because so long as that's not washed away, you are separated from God. Because the Bible says, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 9, Colossians chapter 3 verse 9, uh, verse 9 Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deed. Now, if you're obeying the Word of God, if you're trusting in the Word of God, and that, that's what's required. Understand that. Uh, I think Donna mentioned a verse last week. Um, I feel like it was in John, but uh, the father of his possessed son came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and God said, you just got to trust me. I can handle this for you. And the man said, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. You see, because you can know all this stuff that I'm saying, but you also have to actually trust it. You have to actually trust that that old man has passed away, that you have put off that old man and all of his sins and his deeds. Because if you can't believe that, you got to question, do you even believe that Jesus Christ has saved you? If you can't trust every word in this book, you have no justification to trust any word in this book. So if you're trusting that Jesus Christ, that this Bible is true when it says that Jesus Christ died for your sins, that Jesus Christ paid the price you owe, and that God has washed that sin away, and you're now in bound for heaven, if you trust that, you got to trust everything else it says. And it just says that ye have put off the old man with his deed. What sin are you talking about that was so vast and so great and so much more intense than the sin that that person has or that person has? If you've put it off, if you don't have that sin anymore, what are you talking about? Why, why are you so prideful about something that according to the Word of God, you've discarded. You don't have it anymore. The very next verse, Colossians 3, uh, chapter 3 and verse 10, And have put on the new man, which is renewed. Think about that. You are renewed, and it says, after the image of Him that created Him. So you are renewed after the image of God. What, what is it you're talking about? What sin? are we referring to? Over in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. The Bible says, And be renewed in the Spirit, check this out, of your mind. You know what's supposed to happen when you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? That old man and his deeds are put off. And you become a new man, renewed in the spirit of your mind, verse 24, and that ye put on the new man, which is after God. You've discarded that old sin. You've put all that away. And think about that. It says renewed in your mind. It's not just about trusting, well, Jesus saved me spiritually, physically, He's taking care of me. You're supposed to also clear your mind. Discard that old man and his sin. 
My thoughts shouldn't be on the sin I used to do. The sin I used to be dwallowing in. And if my thoughts and my mind have been renewed from that, how can I compare it with someone else's sin that they've disregarded and they have been renewed from? Put on the new man. Casting off that old man and his deeds. The same Bible that you're trusting told you you were saved. Just told you that. You can't believe one without the other. You can't put one into practice without the other. This whole book, true, start to finish, word for word. And if you were saved, and they are saved, you're two brand new people without past sin to compare. That's, I mean, that's what the Bible says. It's not my opinion. Not my take on it. The Bible says probably 380 some different times, as it is written. And that, that's what it, it says. As it is written. Turn your Bibles over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Start at verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of God who have reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross to get rid of the sin you are pridefully comparing to someone else's sin. How do you do that if you've put on the new man? If those old things are truly passed away. Either they don't exist anymore. That's why God tells His servants, any man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. We all know the kingdom of God is referencing salvation. He says, you, you got saved, but you keep looking back. You're not worth saving. Now, praise God, He saved you. No take backs. He does no refunds. But it doesn't change the fact that He just told you by doing that, you were literally not worth Him saving. I don't know about you. I spend my whole life every day striving to be worthy. Because I don't want God looking down at me and saying, man, I sure wasted my blood on that. And He says you can be worthy. Well, right out the gate, you get saved and you keep looking back. At the moment, you weren't worth saving, according to the Bible. Because the Bible says, once you get saved, when God looks down, there is no sin. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Check this out. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse. That means to wash clean. That means I have no past sin in the eyes of God. And that's the only thing that matters to me. I have no past sin to compare with someone else's past sin. My sin's been washed away from me. And it's been cast an awfully long ways away. In Psalms chapter 103 and verse 12, the Bible says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. You know what that means? As far as the east is from the west... That means as far as it can possibly be, it cannot be further. That's how far all of my past sin has been removed from me. 
The reason I drop to my knees, put my face on the ground, and say, thank you, God, for saving me, is because all of that sin that I could be prideful of is not mine anymore. If it was mine, I'd have a problem. But that sin doesn't belong to me anymore. That sin's not in my past anymore. That sin has nothing to do with me anymore. Because God took it, and He cast it as far from me as something can possibly be. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to you with this verse right here. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 17. This is God telling you, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. If God doesn't remember something, you have no business trying to. Mm. 